Hi, welcome to my next video. This time something a little bit different because I wanted to make a quick video response to a question I got from one of my patrons. As you know, to scan my work, I use a Canon scanner. It's called a Canoscan 9000 F Mark II. Cool name. And even though it's really good, it gives beautiful colors and deals great with watercolor paper, it's an A4 scanner. So you ask me, how do I stitch together the scans in Photoshop? Okay, so first I do the scans in the Canon software and in 600 dpi and all filters off, I only leave the unsharp mask on to make the scans nice and crisp. While scanning, I make sure that the files have enough overlap so I can then stitch them together in Photoshop easily. And for this picture, for example, I had to scan it in three parts. The next step is to transfer the original TIFF files, so uncompressed files to Photoshop and decide which file will be the first one I will start the edit with. Usually I choose the side one, so left or right edge of the picture and I use it as the base file. I'll display it bigger so I see what I'm doing and first I'll try to make it horizontally correct, so I'll use the crop and straighten tool and just drag along the edge. When I feel that the picture is straight, I'll confirm the changes so it's straight and then I'll use the same crop tool to make the file a little bit bigger so I can drop additional layers here and just to have place to work. I'll apply the changes and just let the crop tool do its work. It takes a little bit on files big like this. And then I'll display the next part of the picture and just drag it to the original file I'm working on. I'll position it more or less where it should be and because the scan has darker sides on both sides, that's where the paper went outside of the scanner, I have to cut it. So I'll just select this part and cut the darker margin. I left enough overlap so I can do this. The next thing I usually do is to turn this layer into a smart object. So even though I transform it more than once, it will not affect the quality so much. The next step is to try to match the two layers together. I move the smart object layer to match the background and then turn down the opacity of this layer to about 50%. Then I zoom in and use the transform tool to move this layer just little by little to match this one corner to the background. I wait until this moment when it all becomes kind of sharp and that's when I know that the two layers match in this place only. I then alt click this place so this becomes the pivot of the transformation and move to the opposite corner of the file. So in this case uh, to the down corner of the file. I then move my cursor outside of the transformation box so I rotate using the pivot I already made and then try to match this corner as good as I can. It's not always as perfect as in this example and sometimes I actually have to transform this layer just a bit uh, by dragging the transformation box handles to make it so it matches better but most of the times the rotation is enough. The next step is to make this layer 100% opaque so we see what we are doing and adding a mask to it. I want to make the edge of this layer not straight like it is now but nice and irregular so it's harder to spot. I will use a brush that has an irregular edge, a rough edge, and paint a black line in the mask so it makes the edge of the layer nice and irregular. So while looking at the layer I select its mask and paint a line so it matches the edge of the layer. I hold shift to make it kind of straight. Sometimes it takes few approaches to make a nice line with uh, just the right amount of jaggediness on the on the edge and when I'm kind of pleased about the result I show the mask by alt clicking it and I make sure that the line is completely black so I apply levels to the mask. I then fill with black this part of the mask that is in the part of the picture we really don't want any leftovers of the top layer there so just to be sure. Okay, so as you can see the top layer is only where we want it and it has a nice line, irregular line, so when we put it on the background it matches it perfectly and it's a perfect joint. Just to show you better the irregular line I'll put a green layer in between the background and the top layer just to show you how uh, the joint looks and where it happens. To 
to make you understand this process a little bit better, I'll make this again for the last part of this picture. I'll just pick the last part of the picture and drag it to the file I'm working on. Move the layer to the top. Position it really roughly. As you can see this layer also has the darker margin from the scanning, so I'll just have to select this part and cut it. I'll make it into a smart object. Make it half opaque and try to match it as good as I can with the transform tool. First one corner, make the pivot point and then match the second corner if possible only by rotating. Now that it's matching the background more or less, I'll use the same mask as I did with the first layer. I'll just copy it here and move it a little bit so the line of this topmost layer is also nice and irregular. Just like this. Okay, joining this piece together is nearly complete. I always try to make the joints in places that have some details. It's easier to lose the joint line in details than on big, just uniform washes. And also I try to avoid places that kind of hold your gaze, like faces of characters or main points of pictures. And sometimes it's easier to do two joints in less obvious places than one through the middle of the picture, for example. So uh, you have to be aware of that also. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you liked this kind of tutorial thing. I will make a proper video on how I painted this picture soon, so stay tuned. Okay, as always, feel free to comment, share and subscribe. And you can also support me on Patreon. See you in the next video. Bye.